All right, everybody, we're going to get started. Welcome to the Research Cafe. <clears throat> we took two months off for vacation, quote unquote, uh, <laughs> and now we're back at it, getting ready to send in our grants. Um, and today we have a guest speaker from the Office of Sponsored Projects, uh, Ozzy Garcia. And Ozzy is in the pre-award area, uh, and this is where... I won't say this is where we have problems. This is where we have solutions. <laughs> and <laughs> I'll get started. Yeah, one of the things she's what she's going to be talking to you about is um, about your budget um, and how to put together a budget. But I think also if you have questions about other things, uh, services that OSP uh, has, I'm sure she can answer that. Take it away, Ozzy. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gregory. Thank you. Everyone, good afternoon. Thanks for inviting me to be part of this today. Um, I'm excited to be here and talk to you about one of our great passions is putting these proposals together and the budgets. Um, I put together a presentation on just fundamentals and basics in what you need for your budgets when you're, when you're putting them together for these proposals. But there's a little bit of tips and clues in there that will help you master this, um, master this, this, um, budget preparation. When I was um, putting this presentation together, I wanted, I was thinking about what was needed. And, you know, I said, I'm going to put this presentation together with some, some fundamentals that you'll know, and you'll want, you'll want to know, but also um, throughout the viewing audience out there, the pre-award team is there. So I want us all to be here so we can tell you, we are here to support you. When I put the title here, I put, do you want to build a budget? Kind of like, do you want to build a snowman, you know, for Frozen? That's what it feels like when you get this budget information that you've got to start putting together. And it's like trying to build a snowman in the middle of August in North Texas. Seems almost impossible. But throughout this presentation, hopefully you'll get some tips, like I said, so you can let it go and get it done. Um, so we'll get started with helping you get this budget for your for your proposal. I wanted to start with some basics. Um, what you need to think about when you're putting your budget together for your proposals is the cost consideration. How much is the allowable budget? That's something that the pre-award team is going to look at. One of the first things that we look at when we start working on, on your budget, what's allowable? What's the max amount that you can put on this budget? Um, but then we also want to know what your budget is. How much are you planning? What do you need to make this um, proposal successful? And you can get your research and your studies done. How much do you need to actually complete the research study? Do you need personnel? Do you need animals, equipment? You know, sub awards are always a big one because they take up um, different types of monies that are you're going to allocate to these sub awards. Um, and we also want to ensure that you will have enough that you've budgeted enough with your allowable budget and the budget that's submitted so that you can meet all of your costs and expenses. Sometimes it's not very feasible for us to put a thousand personnel in there when we have a small budget. So we have to think about what we're doing and pre-award is there to help you. I'm gonna put this little note out there that we pre-award, the pre-award team of OSP is here to help you. If you provide us some basic information on your budget justification, your DRA will be able to draft up an initial budget for you and get you started. You won't have to do all that hard work. We can put a lot of that together if you just give us some basic information. Um, another thing to think about is allowable costs. What's allowable, what's not allowable. I put some links on this, on this presentation so that you will know. It's really hard for us to tell you all the, comp the list, it, the complete list of what is allowable and what's not allowable. Also, it makes a difference on who the sponsor is and what the specific RFA that you're um, applying to is saying. Sometimes they allow salaries and sometimes they don't. Sometimes they allow fringe, sometimes they don't. We have all these um, considerations that we need to, all these restrictions that we need to take into consideration when we're building the budget. But again, we are here to help you through that. Um, we have to think about the effort and commitment that you are, are wanting to put on your proposal to get it done. You know, how much effort is required as opposed to how much effort do you have to give? Um, 
Sometimes that doesn't always match up, but the pre-award team is here to help you work through those things. If you give us that time, we will make sure that you are meeting all the requirements that are asked for when we put the proposals together, what the RFA is asking for. Um, we have to think about cost share. Is it allowable? Um, and if it is allowable and we need to have it, have we received the approvals for that? We always cringe when we get cost share. That's not something that we like to play with ever, but sometimes our proposals request that. So we are here to make sure we've covered that on both ends for the PI um, and the institution and for the sponsor. Um, What's the budget allowance? What's excluded in these budgets that you're putting together? A lot of times we don't really know. Um, as PIs, you're not looking at that. You're working on your on your science, but we can help you that. If you have a specific question, which is why I put that, can I? Can I do this? Can I do that? Is this allowable? If you talk to us and have communication, we'll be able to help you answer those questions. If we don't have the question, the answer immediately, we are going to research, we'll reach out to the sponsor to make sure we get that correct answer for you. Had some helpful links here for you. Um, we do have on our website, we have the budget worksheet, one with a cap and one without a cap. The formulas are already built into these template, into the Excel spreadsheet for you, and you can fill it out and complete it or your award can help you. We are here to help you out. The team is here to make it easier for you to um, facilitate this, this process for you. So if you give us that information, you give us that basic budget justification, we'll be able to initiate a draft budget for you, fill in as many blanks as we can. So you already have that done. And then we can have a conversation with you as far as what is needed and get it to, the, to a complete budget proposal, one that is acceptable by the sponsor. We can help you with that. Um, I've also put some links on here for the NIH. What I'm referring to here mostly is NIH. They're usually the standard, but it really depends on the sponsor that you're applying to, what the requirements are going to be, what your budget's going to be, what's allowable or not allowable. Um, what's the difference between a modular budget and a detailed budget? What's going to work better for the proposal that you're working with? I just really wanted to give you all some basic information. Um, and let you know that the pre-award team is here to help you with those questions. We'll be able to let you know whether you need to do a modular or whether a detailed budget is needed, what's gonna work better for you. I've also added on this link here, um, a link to actual applications that have been submitted to NIH. They're complete applications. They have um, budget justifications, budgets in there, plus everything else, other documents that you can look through if you have any questions to help you um, when you're getting started and working through your through your proposal. My main thing and what I want to say throughout this proposal, throughout this presentation, is that the pre-award team, we're here. We are here to help you through this stuff. We want the PIs to be working on their study, on, on their science, on their research plans, all the stuff that we can't do for you. But we can help you through the administrative stuff, which includes the budget. I just put an example here so you all would know what it looks like if you haven't already seen it, or maybe you can just touch upon it if you are familiar with it. Again, pre-award is here to help you. We can help fill in all of these little boxes that sometimes may seem a little overwhelming um, when you look at it. Um, questions to think about is, do you need um, inflation added to your budget? What is the sponsor request? What are they requiring? Is it allowable or not allowable? So we have that put in there um, and we can fix that for you. We can we can correct it. We can do the right input. We can input the right information for you here. Also, the fringe rate. This is an average fringe rate that we have for the faculty, staff and students. This is what we use um, uniformly around across all the proposals that we submit. However, this is just an average. This is not the actual number that is used once it gets funded. We will have everybody's fringe benefit is different. So this is something that we want to make sure that you all are aware that this is just an average. So once we get funded, it may change whatever your um, budget allocation is for salary because this is a movable number. And again, sometimes some, some sponsors don't even allow fringe benefit or they have a cap on what the rate is. Things to think about when you're putting it together. 
um, salary cap. We have two Excel spreadsheets out there, one with a salary cap, one without. We have updated it to the most current one. This is always changing, but we try to stay on top of what the um, guidance is, what the rules are at the time. They're always changing. We have that here for you. Um, and lastly, I really want to emphasize that the formulas are already built into these spreadsheets that you get from the website. So it's best that you don't move, mess with them or change them. If you have to make some adjusted adjustments, let us know so we can work through it. We may have another template that we don't use all the time that we already have in place that you can use because we want to make sure that when we're putting this budget together that we are meeting all the requirements. We're not out of compliance with the sponsor's request. So if you have any questions, here it is, pre-award, we can help you, but I wanted to show you what it looks like. This is the first part. And the second part over here is for subcontracts. If you're working on a proposal and you're going to have sub-award subcontracts, we're gonna need additional documentation, which means we're gonna need additional time. Um, and we need to start getting all the doc all the budgets from these sub-award institutions. We can help you. We will work through that. I think a lot of you have already been working with the team and know what we can do. And that's really what I, I really wanted to emphasize that to, to the audience today. We don't need you to know all of this information. We want you to know it. So you, if you have any questions, you know what we're doing. But pre-award is here to help you through this budget maze that we have in front of you. We can help you with that. We can help you with this documentation. The F&A rate, we can help you determine what is the correct way, rate that needs to be used. As you know, all our proposals require us to have F&A. We want to make sure we're using the correct calculation there. This I just put here for reference. When we're putting the proposal together, we need to have every proposal that we submit needs to have our internal template, the one I just showed you. That's part of our record that we have on how we determine the budget. But that has to match up with what we're inputting into grants. It has to match up with this proposal here. Um, this um, budget here that is part of, in this case, this is part of the NIH proposal that we submit, the SF-424. We will complete this. We will make sure that these numbers match up with what we put down, with what we expect, and are in compliance with what the RFA is requesting. I just want you to show that, that this is what's there. You all don't have to worry about this. We will take care of this for you all. A couple of things to remember. Budget justification, that's something that we always like to talk about and um, with the PIs when we're first working with you on a proposal. Budget justifications, it just depends. Everything depends on what the RFA is asking and what the sponsor is asking. Every time we do something, it's like a little bit different. We know what the standard, the basics are, but it, we always have to go back to what the RFA and sponsor is asking us for. In most cases, we only want the HSC personnel to be included, both non-key and the key personnel need to be included in the budget justification. Non-key can be TBD. Um, if we don't have a name or we're not sure who's going to be filling those spots, that's okay. Key personnel, we have to have their name. If it's an NIA proposal, they need to have an ERA Commons ID. These are all things that we will work through with you when we're putting um, this proposal together. Um, you need to include the consultants and collaborators that are not listed on sub-awards. If they're working through HSC and they're going to be part of the HSC proposal, then we'll need to include them on the budget justification. But if you have sub-awards, all sub-award personnel, including consultants and collaborators that are part of the sub-award, will be on that separate budget justification. So just a couple of notes and tips for you to remember as you're working through this. Um, dollar amounts, this is a big one for me. NIH does not require us to have actual dollar amounts in the budget justification. As a whole, pre-award prefers that they're not there because if we make a change on your budget, we have to make a change everywhere that that dollar amount comes out. We, were, we need for them to all match. So if it's not required, we don't wanna have to put that there and make a mistake in the calculations. Again, this is something that the pre-award pre team is here to help you. You give us the basic information, we will start that for you. We'll start working through it and start putting it together and letting you know what we need, um, where you have extra um, room to put more money in or where you can reduce 
some of your um, budget allocation if needed, we're here to help you. Um, F&A. F&A is a big one. All proposals that we submit are required to have an F to have F and A. Um, Ozzy, could yes. you tell everybody exactly what F and A is? F and A stands for Facility and Administrative Costs. It's also referred to as IDC indirect costs. Um, a general a general way to look at it is as overhead costs. F and A is consistent with um, costs such as light or water or um, even paper supplies, some that type of overhead that everybody's using it. So when we submit a proposal, there's always an F and A cost. Um, our standard negotiated rate at this time is 48%. NIH allows us for most proposals to use that 48%. We something that we are always looking through when we're working through um, proposals that are maybe not NIH sponsored is whether the F and A is inclusive of the total amount or um, over the, the dollar amount. So we have to look at that when we're putting the proposals together. I put some links here also so that you know what um, the indirect cost procedures are. Our FNA negotiated agreement is on there also, as well as our FNA policy. There's different rates depending on what we're doing, whether it be on campus or off campus, whether it's an educational um, um, proposal, some proposals, even NIH, say that there's an 8% limit. We have policies and procedures in place, so we know which, which FNA rate we're supposed to be using for the proposal that we're submitting. Um, notice, I kind of wanted to remind everybody, as I've been talking about this, about giving pre-award the opportunity to help you to help set up these budgets along with the rest of the application, is that we do need at least a minimum of two weeks notice. You know, a part of our initial review includes checking to see if there's PI eligibility, um, if it's a limited submission, budget restrictions. We need to look into the F&A, cost shares. There's lots of things that we need to look at. We will work in, in good faith to help you when these last minute um, proposals come up, but we do need to try to remember to have at least that two week minimum notice to allow the team to prepare to submit these proposals for you all successfully. Also, approvals may be required if we need cost share or there's an FNA issue that we need to discuss. So all of that comes into our timeframes that the DRA send you all and we're trying to make sure that we stick by them so that we can have a successful submission for the PIs. Um, upcoming changes. So um, there's new updates forthcoming. We thought they were going to be in place by October. We haven't heard um, anything definitively. So it may not be in October. It's probably going to be pushed back. The things to remember, um, we do get to, as the, as the submitting institution, we do get to collect uh, IDC on the first $25,000 of a uh, sub-award. Um, and that's going to change to $50,000. The equipment threshold is going to go up from $5,000 to $10,000. And um, we are having a, an FNA negotiated agreement is pending. And so the FNA rate may change. And when that does happen, then, you know, it will be made um, public to everybody, right? Everybody will get notice of that and we'll start using that new FNA rate. Oh, so we have came to frequently asked questions came up with some questions as a team to see um, the questions that we hear from the PI, maybe we can help answer them now. And if there's any more at the end, we can ask some more questions. Um, what do I do first? What are the initial steps? Lots of times we get emails um, from PI saying, hey, I'm getting ready to submit. What am I supposed to do first? So the first step we do is initiate a grams record. Once you initiate that grams record, that's our signal that we got something on the calendar that we need to start preparing for. We will sign it to the correct DRA and then start working on getting those timelines and needed requirements to you. Again, this really goes back to making sure that we're getting enough notice so that we can um, adequately be able to support you with the time that we've been given. We're at multiple, we are always working on multiple submissions at any given time. So the more notice we get, the better off we're going to be in being able to support you 
um, effectively. Can I include the salary increase in my budget? Oh, and communication is key. I forgot about that one. How can I forget? Communication is key. Please, if you have any questions, if you're not, if you don't know something, I, we will be happy to answer your question. Um, we have a pre-award email that I'll have at the end of this slide, but you also, I think a lot of you have already met our team and have worked with them that communicate with us and we will get the answer for you. We will work diligently to make sure that we're on top of your proposals. They mean as much to us as they mean to, to the PI that's submitting it. Can I include a salary increase in my budget? When I was showing you the Excel spreadsheet, there was an option there to put in an increase. NIH does not allow for increase, but we have um, ways to talk about it. I mean, we have ways to work through that. If there is going to be an increase, um, there are different um, options for us, but it depends on the sponsor and the essay. If there is a salary increase that is not in place and you want it to be part of your budget, just know that we are going to want written confirmation of an increase um, so we can use that higher salary rate. If that's an issue for you, have a conversation with us and we will tell you what options are available to you so we can get you the budget that you need for your proposal. Um, this question comes up, up once in a while. It's like, I don't see the requested chain, changes on this email from grants. PIs will get an email saying um, requested change, the specialist is requesting changes. These are just generic emails that come out whenever we're working on your proposal in the grants database. Please know that everything that we're working on as a PI, you all are able to see and look at what, we're what we are doing on your proposal. So you get these emails. In most cases, they're just going, um, the emails are going back and forth between the DRA and the analysts as they're reviewing and fixing any edits that are needed on your proposal. So you'll get that. If you do get those emails, if something is needed, there'll be additional instructions on that email or more importantly, your DA will already have contacted you and let you know, hey, we need this or we need to work on some edits. If you haven't heard from that, it's just going back and forth as they're working through the proposal in, in the grounds database. Um, when do I complete the AR? The ancillary review completion um, is required for every proposal that we submit. The PI is required or should be going onto the grounds record and completing that AR when they've reviewed the application and they've given the okay that it is ready to submit. They've given their final approval for that. Once that uh, AR is complete, that's our signal. That's the pre-award team signal that they the PI has reviewed it. We can hit that submit button to get your proposal to the sponsor time. So we ask that you please don't hit that button unless you have reviewed it and are okay with it. At the same time, we can't submit it if you don't hit that AR button. So we need you to make sure that you're submitting it so that we can um, go ahead and submit the proposal. So it goes back and forth. It's really going to be um, communication and us working together as a team to get that submission to the sponsor timely. I think that's all I wanted to talk about on the AR. I did want to mention though, that once you hit that AR and you give us that okay, we submit the proposal we do not want to have to pull that um, application back. Um, it causes more um, opportunity for error for submitting that. We don't want to come into any sort of technical difficulties. If you make changes, the analyst will, and the DRA then has to review the whole application again to make sure that it's okay. But we really want to only have to pull back out an application when possible, you know, in the most extreme situations, and if it's a significant impact on the proposal. Something to keep in mind as we're going through this, through your proposals and you're working on that approval. This is my favorite. Can I have more time? No, I want to say no all the time. The answer is should always be no. You have your time frames. You should be following the deadlines. However, know that the pre-award team, as I said earlier, um, it means a lot to us to get these proposals submitted timely and correctly. We are just as invested. The team works long hours, weekends to make sure that we submit these proposals timely for you. So if we need to have more time, we will look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. We want you to be aware or keep in mind that we don't only work on your proposals. The DRA team is, and the CRA team 
they're working on submitting multiple proposals for multiple PIs, you know, at any given time. It, it could be for the same deadline or throughout the week. We stay pretty busy. So if you can work with us in helping keep that time frame, that would be so appreciated. I mean, our goal is to avoid having the team work late evenings and weekends. We will do what we have to to submit that proposal, but it'd be great if we can work as a team, keep us notified. I wanna make sure that the team is also notifying you, the PIs, um, where we are on your proposal, what's needed, and that we stay in that constant communication. So although the answer is no, we will look at it on a case-by-case -case basis, but there's no guarantee we can give you extra time. And lastly, um, OSP, the Office of Sponsored Programs, um, including the pre-award team, is here to help facilitate and insist on all your proposal submissions. We want to fully support the PIs in their endeavors to get their research study, um, their study and research funded. Um, with this in mind, our team is willing and ready to help you work through the budgets all the way up to a successful submission. Our big thing is we want to make sure that we're in communication, that the PI and the pre-award team were on the same page um, as far as what was needed, where we're at, um, to make sure that we stay on track. Whenever there's a delay, um, because we've asked for more time or we've had to have some um, sort of hindrance that's keeping us um, behind schedule, it not only affects the PI and the DRA, it affects the other proposals that we may be working on. It affects the analysts who are reviewing it. It affects anybody who needs to sign off on it. So all of these things are things that we have to be fully aware of when we're working on proposals. And we are asking that you also take into that into consideration. But if you have any questions, if you're coming across any um, hardships, if you talk to us, we will definitely work in full faith to help you out to make sure that we get that proposal submitted. Um, the team, I think you all have met all the team. We've got Pilar Schatz, I think she's there. Um, Caitlin Maddox, she should be on there. Chris Smith, um, Grace Awani is here. And then we have at our Alice, we have Carolyn Sheehan. We said, I said on this on this um, slide that I, only, that I still had two vacancies open on the analyst, but as of today, we only have one because Tiffany Reed, she should be on there too. She joined our team today. So um, you can all welcome her. We're happy to have her on board and help us out on the pre award team. I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to anybody on the team. Here's my email. I think you all are familiar with the DRA. We have an OSP pre-award email as well. We want to be able to give you all the information so that you all are successful as well. I think that's it for my presentation. I did have a Q&A here in case you all had any questions or something that I need to clarify for you. I'll be happy to answer it. Well, that's great. I'm glad that I was able to clear everything <laughs> up for everyone. Really? <laughs> this is your chance. <laughs> hey, um, Ozzy, this is Anu here. Um, can you hear me? I can. Hi. Yes. Uh, very nice talk. Thank you so much for uh, hitting all the, you know, the, the main parts about the uh, budgets. Um, a general question. You know, how flexible are these um, budgets? Like, you know, once the grant is uh, awarded, um, say I asked for personal, but now I want to buy some equipment. Is it flexible or is it very hard and fast? You know, I was going to put a presentation together and I want to name it. It depends because that really feels like how I start all my sentences. It depends. You know, in most cases, you are able to rebudget, but it depends. It depends on the sponsor. It depends on the mechanism of what was awarded. So we can't really make those determinations until we read the RFA, um, the funding announcement on what is allowable or not. I can't tell you with a guarantee that yes, but in most cases, we are able to rebudget. Okay. Um, mostly I was thinking of NIH. Um, in most cases, and most NIH cases, we are able to rebudget. Um, that we do have certain thresholds on how much we can, but again, 
it depends. I don't want to tell you yes. I don't know which which mechanism you're working on, and it could be the one that has that you know that restriction on there. But in most cases, we are able to rebudget. Once you submit a proposal with a certain budget and it gets funded, the pre-award team will work with you to reconcile that budget and put the funds where you on the categories that you need. After that, it goes over to the post-award side, and then any rebudget that you need to do, then they will be the ones that will help you. But anyone you reach out to, we will point you in the right direction. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Ozzy, I have a question. F and A, where does that go? F and A, oh, well, I have to pull up policy because there is certain um, percentages where everything goes. Um, let's, let me see if I can go back to that screen. Real quick. It's going to take me a moment to bring that up. That was a good question, Dr. Gregory. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. I just want to give you, there is a certain um, table and hierarchy of how the funds are distributed. And this is where you would find it. Right here. Hopefully you all can see it on what the designation is, on how the funds that the FNA that is collected is distributed. This is part of the link. I'll be happy to send it to anybody, but this is out there um, for us to review. Awesome. Anything else? Any other questions? I know one of the things Ozzy and I talked about is there are links in her slides. And this, because this is recorded, it'll be on the REAP webpage. If you missed, you know, if somebody missed this presentation or if you forgot what she said, um, there are sample grants on the NIH webpage that give you ideas. They're full grants. And so they have um, budget justifications. So you can read. How do you, what is it, what does the budget justification say? How do I justify this thing or that thing? Um, and I think those are very helpful. Um, what else? They are, I think they're very helpful. There's a lot of information out there. I don't want um, anybody to have to, you know, rack their brain or reinvent the wheel. If you need help, reach out to the pre-award team, reach out to us. We'll be happy to point you in the right direction, give you some information to make this process as, as easy and painless as possible. Awesome. And you guys, uh, I just sent in a grant not this past summer. I got another one I'm working on and um, they have been very helpful. Um, so don't hesitate to ask them questions, um, you know, if they don't know the answer, they will find out. Uh, and I know that there's always a question. <laughs> there's always exciting questions. And every time we think we've heard all the questions, there's a new one. Um, yeah. But helpful for the team as well as we continue to grow and build the pre-award team. Awesome. Well, Ozzy, thank you so much for such an informative and helpful presentation. And now I think I think one of the cool things is now everybody can put a face with an email or kind of just this name that's um, on the web page. And Absolutely. that's always helpful. Absolutely. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. All right. Bye, everybody.